In this video, I want to introduce the velocity function in one dimension. So the velocity function is also a uh, vector function of time, also meaning the position function is also a vector function in time, which means that you input some time into this, this function and, uh, and that it outputs a vector. So what does this vector tell you? The magnitude of this vector tells you the speed of the object, and the direction of this vector tells you the direction the object is going at that instant. Well, that's useful information. How do we go about getting that? I want to introduce one of the most important fundamental definitions in kinematics. So I'm going to start with the position function of time in one dimension, and I'll say my one dimension is uh, x, and so that's x uh, as a function of time. I'm called x is in meters, t is in seconds. Given a position function of time, x of t, the velocity function in time, and I'll give it a subscript x, saying that's also in the one dimension which I'm calling x, this velocity function of time is equal to the time derivative of the position function of time. That's it. And so this is a fundamental definition that's important. In fact, it's so important that it's best to be um, uh, remembered just in words instead of equations because this could be any type of notation and it'll change when it goes to 3D, etc. But the actual definition is the same re in words regardless of what your mathematical representation is. So here I've written it out for you. The velocity function is the time derivative of the position function. And regardless of the dimension you're in or the axis you're on, this statement is always true and it allows you to find the velocity function given a position function. Okay, so let's let's just do an, an example here. Let's say I have a position function of time given by 2t minus t squared, x is in meters, t is in seconds. And so the velocity function of time is the derivative of this. I can differentiate a polynomial 2 minus 2t. So note, if this is in meters, then the velocity is in meters per second. I have a uh, meters here in the numerator, and then there's a time in the denominator. So if I'm in meters and seconds, my velocity is in units of meters divided by seconds. Okay, so it's really that simple. As long as you have the position function, you just have to differentiate it to find the velocity function. Let's introduce some uh, terminology similar to what we did with the position function of time. What is the initial condition of this function? The, the initial, <laughs> I, I, initial condition of the velocity function of time is defined to be the velocity when the time is equal to zero. And this has some subscript x if I'm along the x-axis. It'd be subscript y if I'm along the y-axis. And so I might give this its own uh, notation, which I might call v sub x uh, zero, which I call v sub x naught is, the, is how I just say that in words. And so for this uh, function up here, that uh, is uh, going to be equal to 2 meters per second. It's the value of this function with t is equal to 0, which happens to be 2. Sometimes I'm not necessarily interested just when the time is equal to 0, but I'm interested in two points in time, which I'll call the initial time t sub i and some final time t sub f. Sub, sub i means t with a subscript i, and then final time t with a sub script f. And so then I'll have, with my initial time, I can define now an initial velocity. So I'll call it initial, let me, initial velocity. So my initial velocity, which I might identify with uh, v sub xi, is going to be the value of my velocity function v sub x at the initial time 
t sub i. And then I might have some, then I will have some final velocity, which I might identify if it's along the x-axis, v sub x f, and that's going to be the value of the velocity function at the final time. And then, of course, I might want to calculate the velocity difference, delta v sub x. That's going to be the final velocity minus the initial velocity, which is the velocity function evaluated at the final time, minus the velocity function evaluated at the initial time. As an example, let's look at an initial time equal to two seconds, and then I can calculate my initial velocity, which is the function evalu evaluated at t sub i. So that's v sub x evaluated at two, which is equal to, uh, that's here, two minus four minus two meters per second. Note that this is still a vector function of time. So when I'm in one dimension, then the magnitude is the absolute value of the number, which is two, and the sign gives me the direction of the vector, which is in the negative x-axis. And so in this case, I have, if, if say, I'll call that as my positive x-axis, my velocity vector then points in the negative x-axis and it has a magnitude of two meters per second. Remember, this is not a displacement vector, but it's just a vector of magnitude given the speed, two meters per second, and it's pointing in the negative x direction. Okay, and so now I can have my final time, say, let's say that's three seconds. I can calculate my final velocity, the function evaluated at uh, three, which is then equal to, so that gives me two minus six, or minus four meters per second. So now, at three seconds, I have a vector whose magnitude is four meters per second, and it's pointing in the negative x direction. So finally, if I wanted to calculate the uh, <laughs> the velocity, oop, the velocity difference here, that's going to be the final velocity minus the initial velocity. Well, that's minus four meters per second minus so minus two meters per second, which is going to be a negative two meters per second. The velocity difference is also a vector, which is in this case has a magnitude of two meters per second and is pointing in the negative x direction.